Grand jury says a Dell City police officer should not face charges after he allegedly shot an innocent bystander. It was during that, that deadly high school football game shooting in Choctaw. The man was shot in the middle of all the chaos. KCO's Jason Berger is live now in Choctaw. Jason, you spoke with the victim's attorney. Yeah, guys, that's right. The victim's attorney is asking, where is the body camera video? Dell City Police commented on that as the investigation on the football game shooting continues. He had several surgeries. I, I believe he just had another surgery. Um, so he's still having surgeries because of, you know, he got shot um, in a very uh, critical part of his body. These pictures of Demetrius Carter were given to us months ago by attorney Billy Clark. His client was shot in the middle of the chaos the night a shooter opened fire at Choctaw High School during a football game against Dell City. He attempted to uh, kind of calm these kids down from fighting. When a weapon was uh, introduced, he moved out of the way like everyone else did. And that's when police say an off-duty Dell City police officer fired his weapon. This particular officer and his partner come running around the corner and pointed his gun, no warning, nothing, just shot in the direction of my client and then back hit him in, in, the, in the chest. As part of the decision, the DA's office made six recommendations for all law enforcement agencies and school districts in Oklahoma County. One of those says a lead law enforcement agency should be selected in a scenario like the football game shooting. And the first listed recommendation says to make sure uniformed personnel have functioning body worn cameras that activate in a timely manner. We've asked for uh, transparency, we've asked for we asked for the body camera and we're not getting it. We learned Thursday a grand jury did not recommend any charges against that Dell City police officer. But DCPD gave us this statement saying in part, quote, while this grand jury decision has been released, there is still an active and ongoing investigation related to the incident and all related evidence, including body camera footage, remains sealed by court order from the Oklahoma County District Attorney. I agree. They do have incredibly difficult jobs. I get that. But unlike any other job, they get specific training on what's a threat, what's not a threat. A teenager was originally charged with murder in the shooting, but charges were dropped without prejudice in January, meaning they can be refiled. And that just goes to show what kind of investigation we're having. And a 16 year old passed away after the shooting that night. Clark says he will be filing a federal lawsuit in Choctaw. Jason Berger, KOCO 5 News guys. Jason, thank you. This Oklahoma man being held on federal charges new at 10. A preliminary hearing is now set in his case. Sean Palmer is accused of bombing a satanic temple in Massachusetts earlier this month. Palmer made a court appearance this afternoon after being arrested at his Payne County home yesterday. If convicted, he faces up to 20 years in prison. The hearing is scheduled for next Wednesday at 2. It is cold, it is windy, and <laughs> that is not changing anytime soon. Chief Meteorologist Damon Lane joining us now. Damon, I know you're tracking rain as we move closer yeah. to the weekend. I mean, it's April, but it's feeling a lot more like early March. This cold front that came through here early today really dropped our temperatures. Right now, we're running about 20 to 30 degrees colder compared to this time yesterday. So when our cold front hit right around 11 a.m. across Oklahoma City, our temperatures dropped about 10 to 12 degrees in about 10 minutes, when you can drop temperatures that quickly in that short amount of time, that's a big air mass change. And so that air mass change has moved in. The winds are not making it feel any better. Yeah, 55 degrees. We call that cold this time of the year. 54 here at the TV station. Already the 40s from Enid and out towards Visay as well. 48 degrees. So temperatures are going to continue to drop tonight. It will be cold. So out the door tomorrow morning, it is cold, dry, and breezy. 42, but... How about wind chills in the 30s? Your newest timeline for rain coming up. Back to you. All right, Damon, thank you. A lot of you reached out to us about this last night, asking about those loud booms. Dell City Police originally said that Oklahoma City Police were, were doing some training. But new today, OKCPD says that their bomb squad was actually getting rid of some unstable old military explosives. We spoke to someone who heard those explosions last night. I've heard times when when they're practicing with firearms and I've heard them testing uh, the engines and stuff, but uh, this was definitely different. It sounded more like um, an explosion, like a bomb almost. OKC police say the detonation was necessary, but they did apologize for causing a disruption for anyone who heard it.
We are following breaking news tonight. ABC News confirming that Israel has launched a retaliatory missile strike into Iran. A senior U.S. official telling ABC that the strike took place early Friday morning local time. This comes after what you're seeing on your screen right now. Five days after Iran launched more than 300 drones and missiles in the direction of Israel. The vast majority of those failed or were intercepted by Israel and its allies. Now, we don't know yet many details about this new retaliatory strike, including casualties or where those missiles struck. And earlier today, President Biden announced the U.S. and its allies are imposing new sanctions on Iran. And that's in response to that attack on Israel over the weekend. This comes as concerns remain about a wider war in the region. Now, these sanctions target 16 people and two entities in Iran tied to the country's drone program, while the UK's targeting Iranian military organizations and individuals. But experts say the sanctions may not be that effective impact of the sanctions is likely to be diluted just because Iran has real wherewithal and experience in bypassing sanctions and it has allies who I'm sure will be happy to help Iran as well. There will likely be more sanctions in the coming days. President Biden says he directed his team to continue to degrade Iran's military industries. Proceedings resume tomorrow in the hush money criminal trial against Donald Trump. Jury selection will continue until about six alternates are seated in court today. A full 12 person jury has now been seated. One alternate was also selected. Trump faces 34 felony counts of falsifying business records for his alleged role in a scheme before the 2016 election. Tomorrow, Oklahoma will pause to remember the darkest day in Oklahoma City's history. 29 years ago, the Alfred P. Murrah Federal Building was bombed in the single deadliest act of domestic terrorism in U.S. history. Final preparations were completed today for the remembrance ceremony. The ceremony will be held outside at the Oklahoma City National Memorial Museum. Family members will read the 168 names of those killed in the attack aloud. It's always uh, very emotional, very impactful. We'll also have an 168 seconds of silence at 9.02 a.m. I think sometimes we forget that um, or people weren't born and they don't really realize how heroic the effort was in the rescue and recovery and in the crime scene investigation and how important that is that we remember all those people, those who were killed, those who survived and all those changed forever. This year's keynote speaker will be Caitlin Durkovich, a member of the National Security Council. And new tonight, Governor Kevin Stitt has ordered flags fly half staff tomorrow, April 19th. The remembrance ceremony will begin at 845 tomorrow morning with seating about 15 minutes before. You can watch the entire ceremony right here on KOCO 5. We will also stream it online. I encourage you to tune in. We are just days away from the playoffs returning to Oklahoma City for the first time in years, and something special is in store for this Sunday's game. Yeah, the playoff shirts. This is a tradition for these postseason games. Our KCO Zachariel got a look at what it takes to make the thousands of free shirts that are given away each playoff game. Zach is live now. You're outside the Paycom, Zach. Hey, Jess Evan, that's right. Good evening to you. If you've ever been to a playoff game, you know just how awesome the energy is inside the arena. You've probably also gotten one of these shirts before. This one's actually one of my old playoff shirts, but they deck every single seat inside the Paycom with the playoff shirt for fans to wear during the game. It really is such a special tradition, and this weekend will be a milestone to remember. Let's go. It's electrifying. Right now, I got chills, like just thinking about it. There really is nothing quite like playoff games in OKC. It's such a beautiful manifestation of playoff energy and community and local and our city just coming alive. What helps make it so special? No, put back, no, Adam. The unity of the crowd, all decked out in the same colors thanks to their free playoff t-shirts given away each home game. And that place is sold out and everyone's screaming at the top of their lungs. Everyone's wearing the same jersey and it's, it's one of the most special times of the year in Oklahoma City for sure. Justin Lawrence and his team at Oklahoma Shirt Company are behind this year's playoff t-shirts. It's like storm watch season around here. We're waiting for the games. We're waiting and when it, the trajectory is there, we start arranging our production. And it's a massive production. This is game two 
um, shirts. Just game two. Just game two. 18,000 shirts are printed for each game and on short notice. And it takes us two days, two full days, all of our staff, all hands on deck. Their warehouse ready for a deep thunder run and more home games. We're prepared to do this until the NBA Finals on June 6th. And if we go all the way, if they go, we're going to go wherever they go. But first, game one. On Sunday, it will be a historic milestone. The Thunder will give away their one millionth playoff t-shirt. We don't take this moment for granted. It's incredibly special to us. The Thunder say that lucky fan who gets it. We can't reveal all of our secrets, of course, <laughs> uh, but we've got something worked out, something pretty special to recognize the moment. And yes, I know what you're all thinking. What will this year's playoff t-shirts actually look like? We are keeping the design under wraps for now. The designs are fire. They're so good. We're so excited. Um, and man, I just can't wait for you guys to see the shirt. Thunder up. Let's go. Playoffs, baby. Playoffs, baby. I love the energy there. Listen, guys, I promise I tried my absolute hardest even just to get a tiny little sneak peek of this year's shirts, but the remaining tight lipped that's fine. Thankfully, we don't have to wait too long. The Thunders say keep an eye on their social media on Saturday. That's when they plan to make the big reveal for Game 1 Thunder Playoff t-shirts. Putting live, Zach Royale, KOCO 5 News.